Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing a question that I've seen brought up by fans for the last couple months, ever since Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl got revealed. And that's the question of HMs. Obviously, in Generation 4, HMs existed. HMs were used heavily. But in recent generations, they've kind of been phased out to the point where we've had Pokemon take the role uh, and their natural physical abilities replace the use of HMs. We've seen them just revamped and changed in a way that they're not recognizable to what they were in the past. But it's been a fundamental decision by Game Freak to go and retroactively change this feature. So when we're returning to an old generation, that begs the question, will HMs make a return? What will Ilka Inc. do with this feature? Will they remain in place and feel, I would argue, archaic compared to what we have today? Or will they be changed in some way? Let's discuss that. Now, before we jump into the main topic of this video, I just want to mention that in one of my previous Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl videos, only 8.9% of you guys who watched and hopefully enjoyed the video were actually subscribed to the channel. Now, obviously, I make new Pokemon content and content on other video games and topics every single week. So if you guys don't want to miss any of that stuff and you enjoy what I've done previously, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you never miss a new upload. HMs for a very long time was a feature that most Pokemon fans did not like. Now, truthfully, I never minded them. I felt that it was a good way to hinder progression, make you kind of think outside the box with your team. I also felt that it made you think more about team customization and also allowed for artificial restrictions on certain items and things that you could find, which ultimately I think added some padding to old Pokemon games, and I think if they were reintroduced in a smart way, could actually make Pokemon games feel a little meatier and longer. But obviously, in general, HMs in that way, it, that's a discussion for another day. The last couple generations, on the other hand, Game Freak has begun moving away from HMs. In Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, they introduced Ride Pokemon, which took the place of HMs. Special Pokemon you could summon that weren't actually part of your team. You didn't even have to have them caught. And they would perform these overworld duties for you. In Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they literally just had Pikachu and Eevee perform all of the HM roles. So that's how they reincorporated this into Kanto without changing the layout and design of Kanto fundamentally. And in Sword and Shield, they gave the bike most of these features. They allowed it to travel on water. They allowed it to speed up and slow down. They allowed you to essentially just teleport from location to location using the Corviknight taxi service, and they got rid of things like smashing rocks and other aspects. They had rocks and other things to keep you from moving in Alola, but again, it was with Pokemon Ride. If you were in the ocean and you had to clear a big boulder, you could just summon a Sharpedo, ride on that Sharpedo, and slam into those rocks. And that's pretty much how they got around it. But we're coming back to Generation 4. Generation 4 is very well known for heavily using HMs, and there's a ton of them. You have your normal ones like Rock Climb and Cut and Fly, but you also have ones that took on a massive amount of importance and meaning. Ones like Waterfall, Defog, Rock Climb. A lot of these were introduced and it, I'll admit, made team building a little bit difficult. One of the early Pokemon that could actually serve as a bit of an HM slave and use a ton of these moves was B-Barrel. He could learn uh, Rock Climb, he could learn Rock Smash, he could learn Surf. He was an incredibly useful Pokemon. But then you would have areas where Defog was needed. And if you didn't have a flying type with essentially big enough wings to use Defog, then you had to go catch one, you had to bring him in with your party, and you had to use him. So there's going to be some interesting decisions that Ilka has probably already made and we'll learn about in the coming months. But before we do, I think we should talk about what the best way would be to go about handling this. And I think there's two. The first is that you could leave the features intact, meaning in the areas that were foggy in Sinnoh, uh, up near Celestic Town is the best example of that. You could have some sort of other feature to make this work. The best example that I can give is essentially build in HM features into Pokemon attributes. So let's say you get up to where Celestic Town is and you have this route and it's very foggy and you can't see. You need a Pokemon with large enough wings to blow, as I hit my mic, with large enough wings to blow that fog away. That could be a good feature. I think you could do the same thing with Rock Smash and Rock Climb, ground type Pokemon, Pokemon with claws, Pokemon with large hooves. 
Pokemon who can ram into things, as Sharpedo as an example from Alola from, uh, from before. Those are ways that you could sort of mesh the two worlds together and make it so your Pokemon just kind of naturally perform these duties because of their physical attributes. And you could still keep the same gameplay loop intact from the original games. The other way that you could go about this is you could change a lot of this. You could gate some of this stuff in a different way. Like for example, uh, HMs are usually, unless HMs are used to hide items, HMs are also usually used to keep the player moving in one direction and keep them from going to areas where they're not supposed to. You could place different types of barriers in the way of those players, or you could change the progression so players are allowed to have more of an open feel and visit different areas. For example, once you're leaving Hardhome City, you have the option to travel all the way up to Celestic Town it's just that the story beats don't play out yet because you haven't triggered other parts of the story. In Celestic Town, usually you deal with Team Galactic, you run into Cyrus. You could just have it so it's programmed right into the game that if you arrive at Celestic Town too early before you get to Vale Stone and Pastoria, you don't encounter that. And eventually you do have to go back to Celestic Town. But I think this would do a ton to make the game feel more open and you can still include some sort of physical attribute to unlocking hidden items. There's a lot of Pokeball items dotted around the landscape of Sinnoh that are protected by HM use. So ultimately, it's going to be up to you to determine, should I have the Pokemon with me that can interact in this natural way or do I not? So that's a lot of questions that are going to give the player character more choice. And I think in a Pokemon RPG, choice is a good thing. All of this talk about, you know, how you amend old games, how you amend old game design to fit with modern standards. A lot of it we don't have good answers to just yet, and it's because we don't have a good feel of how faithful or how true these remakes are going to be to the main original games, the original releases of Diamond and Pearl. And I say this because even though they've told us, and I've, I've mentioned this in previous videos, that these are traditional remakes, meaning they're one for one, at least that's what they want to claim. Most fans don't really buy that. Most fans think there are going to be features in these games that weren't in the originals. But I'm of the opinion that I think there's a, a really good chance that we simply revert and that we do go back to Generation 4 and that there are HMs. And even though I've mentioned a couple solutions in this video as to how you could either have the best of both worlds and kind of bring them back in spirit while still making it easier for the players, HMs might make a return and they might make a return in the same exact way that they existed in the original games. And we need to have the discussion of how much of a mistake that might be. You can, if you played Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum, or you played any of those Generation 4 games, you would know that it was constantly difficult. If you had a team of Pokemon that did not have the ability to perform these HMs, and you reached a point in the story where you needed to access one, you had to go back to a Pokemon Center, you had to swap out a Pokemon, you had to bring your HM guy in, and you had to go to this, ob this object and clear it and keep moving forward. And then if you're in a dungeon or you're in an area where you need to continue pushing forwards and you can't just go back, re-switch the Pokemon, and then you're good to go, then you're not going to be leveling up that Pokemon as frequently. That Pokemon might fall behind the rest of your team in terms of learning new moves, learning new abilities, uh, leveling up in general. So it was a struggle and it was something that you always had to deal with, especially because most people, again, used B-Barrel and not a ton of people used B-Barrel on their normal team. Not a lot of people looked at Bidoof and said, I'm going to catch that guy. I'm going to use him, even though we have seen a lot of Bidoof this year in Pokemon media, which has been a little strange, but they could remedy it all with one fix. They could have the exact same HM system that they had in the original games and bring Pokemon up to more modern standards by simply keeping the Gen 8 feature of you always being able to access your Pokedex, not your Pokedex, your PC. If you could do that, you walk up to a Rock Smash location, you swap out your B barrel, you clear it, and then you swap back your normal teammate. That would solve everything. It doesn't have to be so complicated. I gave a lot of various solutions before, ways you could uh, bring together the old and the new, but that's the simplest solution. And that's the one that I think Ilka should do. That's the one that I think would make the most sense. That's the one that I think if you give it some thought, it's probably the key answer. Just bring up that Gen 8 feature. Allow us to check our box at any point. It was in, I believe it was in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. It was in Sword and Shield. Always able to access your box. 
You have no need to constantly be keeping certain teammates in the box away from your team for extended periods of time, and you can still use those restrictive features to guide the player throughout the region, hide items till later on when you have access to Pokemon that can learn those HMs, and you can keep story pieces hidden away until the appropriate moment that you want the player to encounter them. That's what I think they should do. Will they do it? That's an open question. I'd love to know what you guys think though. Do you think HMs should make a return in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? With E3 coming up pretty soon, I'm gonna have some videos talking about that in the coming weeks. I think we're gonna know sooner rather than later if this feature makes a return because I think we're gonna see some trailers pretty soon, both for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and for Legends Arceus. And if you were the ones developing the game, would you bring them back? Do you think we'll see them? Would you bring them back? Let me know in the comments section below and be sure to leave a like on this video because there's still plenty of topics we're going to be talking about with both of these titles and I'm excited to do so. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.